Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. 1,825 days, otherwise known as five years, have passed since my transition from corporate America to professional photographer first began. And one of the most common questions I receive is, is not about photography specifically, rather what it was like going through the transition and how I came out, I guess, unscathed, so to speak. And the short answer is that there was absolutely nothing unscathed about it. I was beat up, drugged down, constantly told it wasn't going to work, almost gave up on more occasions than I can count, but kept pushing through all the noise and somehow, some way, I'm fortunate enough to still be doing what I love today. And the timing of this video couldn't be more serendipitous. Not only is it my five-year anniversary from the time my position in the corporate world was eliminated, but on top of that, this channel also just crossed over a quarter of a million subscribers, which is just absolutely unimaginable to me. And, and as always, to celebrate a milestone, I want to do a giveaway, but not just any giveaway. This will be my biggest giveaway ever from a monetary perspective. So be sure to stick around for that. So when this venture first began, my expectations were that I was going to be, I guess, in the field shooting all the time, selling tons of prints and exhibiting in, in art galleries and festivals while traveling all over the world. And and while I have been lucky enough to travel quite a bit, the aforementioned three expectations were simply just not the reality for me. And I do want to preface this video by saying that my way is not the correct way to start a career with photography. It's also not the wrong way to start a, start a photography career either. It's just the way that ended up working out for me. So to jump right into it, if I had to break down the, the path or the framework that I followed to making photography a full-time career, I would break it down into three categories, with the first being something that I call begin before you start. And this is very, very important because making a career with photography, it, it takes a while. So I would highly recommend anybody who is interested in doing this, don't go out and quit your job and then start the process the very next day because you will be in for a world of hurt. But what I ended up doing is that, you know, when you work in the corporate world long enough, I was in the corporate world for 17 years. After you spend enough time in that environment and you go through a, a ton of layoffs, you know, my organization did a, a, layoff, a layoff on almost an annualized basis. And once you go through so many of those, you really get to uh, understand the, the feeling or the tension, if you will. You can tell when something is about to happen or you can tell when something is awry or amiss. So, when when I when my position was eliminated, it wasn't a huge surprise. I could definitely feel that something was coming. But I had started this process of really seriously thinking about making a shift from the corporate world to photography about 12 or, or maybe 18 months before I was actually let go. So I had a huge runway, and base and this is a hard part of it all. I spent tons of time in the evening, almost every weekend for over a year preparing for what a, a full-time career in photography might look like. And the very first portion of this has to do with your online presence. Now, that does not just mean social media, not just Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, threads, all the other things out there, although that is an important part of it. But all successful businesses today have a very good online presence and is absolutely critical. But what I think is more important than social media is your website. Your website actually becomes your central hub or your headquarters to your brand. Because at the end of the day, you're, you're a person and you're trying to build a brand in yourself as a photographer. So your website is going to house all of your information about your brand. So it's super, super important. Now, the next portion of this begin before you start is I started to, I guess, test the waters a little bit as to what it would be like to actually make money from photography. Now, I started doing real estate photography, I started doing portraits, and I also started doing events. And what's great about those three genres of photography is they are not easy at all. They're actually very difficult. But what is easier, what I found easy, is to be able to find people that are looking for those services. So for real estate, homes are always being bought and sold, and realtors and homeowners need photographs of their property. So I found it pretty easy to find those types of clients. People are always looking for portraits to be done and there's always events happening. And you know, portraits are, you know, it's not super hard to find someone looking for portraits. You just market for it and they're all over the place. And events, photographs are, are critical for events because the person or the company that's putting the event on needs these photographs in order to market the event the following year. So I started to dabble around in that just to start getting into 
that making money with photography mindset. And I didn't make a ton of money doing it. And I honestly don't think I was very good at any of it either, but it just got the wheels rolling and enabled me to start saving money to kind of create this runway for the, uh, the inevitable, which I wasn't 100% certain was about to happen at that time. But what is so important, and it's something that I started to really think about, when I started, I guess I made maybe the three or four months leading up to my layoff, I started to think to myself, you know, I, I started to feel what was kind of happening or what could happen, and I started to ask myself, Mark, if you were let go today, what would tomorrow look like? And when you start to really think about that, it really puts a sense of urgency in your mind. And I started to develop, develop a go-to-market strategy to determine exactly what I would do if I was let go today. And I basically, you know, I'm a landscape photographer, so that was a genre I really wanted to go to. So I spent a lot of time just writing down every single possible revenue channel that I could come up with in order to generate landscape photography or landscape photography type income. And that is everything in that begin before you start. There was, so there was so much prep work involved before the my technical business started. Now, the second portion of this is something that I called cast a wide net. And this had to do with that go-to-market strategy that I created in the beginning. And basically, I wrote down everything I could think of and I started to go after these. So I was let go from my job and the very next day, I was off and running. I was reaching out to, to tourism boards to, uh, to, to offer my services. I was reaching out to, you know, once again, real estate agents, which is not quite uh, landscape photography, but it was something that was the, the genre that I felt could be a band-aid, if you will, for, for income in the time being. But I also did stock photography. Of course, I did prints. I was trying to get workshops off the ground, uh, digital products. You could do presets. You could do tutorials. I did so many different things to try and generate income. And what's hard is that I did this for 12 months because I needed to figure out A, what worked, and B, what didn't work. And you can't figure that out in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. It takes a while to figure it out. So I went after, don't quote me, but I think eight or maybe 10 different revenue channels that were somehow related to outdoor photography. And I went after them with all of the muster that I had. I was working 60, 70 hours of a week, a week, month after month after month for the first year. And it was absolutely tiring. And during this cast a wide net stage, it's not just going after, you know, what you think can bring in money. I was also continuing to build my website, continuing to improve my website. I actually went through four complete overhauls of my website up until to this day. So in five years, four overhauls. Um, it's at the point now where I, I, I'm the most happy with it. But I think constant website improvement is something that really never changes. But what's so interesting is you could have the greatest website in the world, but if you don't have a way to drive traffic to that website to get eyeballs on your website, what's the point of it all? So I really focused on that because I knew my website was going to be important. I knew that it was going to be the headquarters of my brand. How do I get people to it? And everything I put out there in social media linked back to my website. So you post a photo, link it back to your website. You write an article, link it back to your website. And you, or I, should, I should say you write an article, you share it somewhere, link it back to your website. You create a video, link it back to your website. Because the goal is if you create something that somebody really enjoys or somebody finds benefit in it, and you put a link to your website, the odds are pretty high that they're gonna go to your website to get more of that information or to see more of whatever it is you're creating. And I received an email, and I've mentioned this email one time, I think a couple years ago, and the gentleman who wrote it, if, if, if you're watching, thank you again, yeah, we, we've spoken quite a few times, and I won't read this entire email, but there was one line in it that still sticks to me to this day. That I, I think about it just about every day. And the quote is, the market for landscape photography things is small but the market for the landscape photography experience is massive. And it's something that I think about constantly because knowing what I know now, that gentleman was absolutely spot on. It was absolutely beautiful advice and it's something that I continue to think about constantly as, as I just mentioned. And this will all make sense here in just a few moments. But I really focused on creating value for other people. And it took me a little bit of time to figure that out because it came from the corporate world where there's that tangible selling process. I give you product, you give me money. And I was so, in the early days, I was so fixated on like, what can I, what's the physical thing I can sell to get money to survive? 
And it took a gradual shift away from that, but I started to realize that if I create good enough value for other people, good enough free value for other people, everything else from a monetary perspective is just going to work itself out. And that free value can be eBooks, it can be articles, it can be, it can be videos, it can be, uh, what else, uh, courses, it, it could be anything. But if there's good enough value in it, people are gonna come back to you. You know, I started to create free courses. I actually just released a new free course, just, I think last week, uh, all about the, the this is a shameless plug, but the Lightroom calibration section, one of the most confusing and underutilized tools within Lightroom, but what I think to be one of the most powerful tools to enhance color. And I created an entire free course for it, which I'll, I'll link above here and I'll link it in the description. And if you're watching on TV, I'll put a QR code on the screen so you can scan that as well and download a copy. But creating this free value, and I started to think about this as to how I interact it within the photography ecosystem because of course, I'm a photography fan. I follow photographers. And if I say, watch a photographer on YouTube and I really enjoy the content that they create and I learn something and I find it beneficial, if that person has an article that he, that he or she writes, the odds are pretty high that I'm going to consume that article. I'm going to read that article. Or if that photographer creates a course and sells it for 25 or 50 or a hundred dollars, the odds are pretty high that I will probably go pick up that course because I have found value in the other free stuff that I have gotten or received from that photographer. So I just, I really feel like if you focus on creating good value for other people, everything else will just work itself out. And that's something that I have really focused on. Now, the final portion of this is something that I call don't beat your head against the wall. And what this has to do with is while you're casting that wide net and you're going through that first year and you're grinding it out and you're going after all of these different revenue channels, they're all not going to work. And believe me, I wish I could tell you to do this, do this, and don't do this and don't do that, but I can't. Because what worked for me might not work for you. What works for you might not work for me. Things work differently depending on where you're at in the world. So the only way to figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you is just to go after it. You just got to go after it for at least six to 12 months. And then, then you can go back and you can analyze your results and see, you know, I have spent this much time on this revenue channel and, and recognize this or I spent this much time on this revenue channel and recognized nothing. So I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm gonna take the time that I allocated to those revenue channels and I'm gonna take that time back and I'm gonna put it towards the things that are working for me. And this is where you really start to see the momentum because that first year is tough. You're gonna lose confidence pretty quickly because you're not gonna really generate money. I think the very first year after I got through my, I should say my second year after I got through that 12 year kind of experimental phase, I only generated around 15 or $20,000. My last year, my most recent 12 month cycle, I'm now making more than I did when I was in the corporate world, which is amazing, but it takes a little while to get that ramp going. So analyzing what works, what doesn't work and stop doing what doesn't work and focus more on what does work and focus on growing it. So things like, like physical products, I put a lot of effort in print sales in the beginning, but I spent so much time uh, printing and cutting these prints and matting these prints and packaging them and shipping them for a small amount of revenue. And it was consuming a lot of, a lot of my time, but it really wasn't generating a lot of income for me. So I kind of started to shift my focus away from physical products and focus more on digital products. You only create a digital product once, it's much easier to market and distributing it is so, so much easier than a physical product. And I had more success doing that. So I started to shift my focus away from something that wasn't working and focus more on something that is working. That was the digital product. So that's what I mean. But constantly focusing on creating that value for other people, I firmly believe if you don't focus, and this is kind of, it's easier for me to say now than, than back then, of course, but focusing on that value, if you create good enough value for other people, they're gonna come back, they're gonna wanna support you, they're going to purchase something that you might be creating in the future, but it all starts with that good value for others. And I think that was really the key to it all. Now, before I get to 
the giveaway, which I'm super excited about. I just want to say a big thanks to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a robust and beautiful online platform to develop your website. You can showcase your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and display your work using customizable galleries in order to make it your own. And with Squarespace's online store feature, you'll have access to all the tools you'll need to start selling your physical, digital, or service products online immediately. You can even use Squarespace's new asset library so you can upload, organize, and access all your content from a single place in order to easily find and use them across the entire Squarespace platform. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So as far as the giveaway is concerned, 250,000 subscribers, a quarter of a million subscribers. I can't thank you all enough. Thank you so much. You all were a huge part, huge reason as to why I can sit here and do what I love to do to this day. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I had mentioned that this is by far the biggest giveaway from a monetary perspective that I have ever done, and it absolutely is. I've given away tons of camera bags and many of other uh, little gizmos and gadgets and camera equipment before, but nothing this expensive. And what it is, is in an, a complete Nissi filter set. So this is going to include not only the filter holder, it's going to include the circular polarizer, it's gonna include the entire filter set. So all of the graduated neutral density filters, you will have a, a soft grad, a medium grad, medium grad, a hard edge grad, all of the solid ND filters, so a three stop, a six stop, and a 10 stop filter a complete set to get you started with a value of almost $1,000. So I'm definitely excited to give this away. This is absolutely tre tremendous. I, obviously, I'm a Nisi ambassador, so I am a huge fan of the filters. I do think they are the best in the business. So if you are interested in, in uh, entering the giveaway for the filters, just leave me a comment below and just let me know what type of photography you are into, whether it's weddings, sports, wildlife, landscapes, whatever it is. Just leave me a comment. Let me know what you're into. And in two weeks, in, <laughs> and in two weeks, I will pick a random comment and I will announce it in the video in two weeks and I'll make sure that I get this, uh, this Nissi filter set sent out to you. So as always, thank you so much for carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me today. If you did enjoy the video, if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And thank you so much for all the support over the last five years. It really does mean the world to me. Thanks so much, and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.